what? Ads. Someone's actually profiting off of this? I mean, I just thought this was your average old politically correct song. What on earth could be popular about this? Oh. If you've been on the internet long enough, specifically around the deep parts of YouTube, you've probably come across this dancing low-quality army squad at some point in your life. If you're like me, you probably ask questions like, where did this even come from? Who made it? Why was it made? And what has happened to it since then? Well, question no longer, for these questions and more will be answered in the known history of Serbia Strong. Slight disclaimer here, I am a bit late for discussing this topic as a lot of sources and info have been taken down by this point, but since the only other analysis on this is by a normie channel that plays off mispronouncing Serbian names as a joke, I felt the need to make a better video on the subject. Now to begin, where did this video come from? Remember that other analysis I just mentioned? It actually gets a fact wrong. You know what? The song is called Serbia Strong, so we'll just say that it originated in Serbia for the sake of not hurting our brains with weirdly spelled words. <laughs> This name was loosely given to it by the very original uploader, who I'll be bringing up later. The song was not made in Serbia. I repeat, it was not made in Serbia. It obviously was made by Serbs, but it's not filmed in Serbia. Little background info to explain. The year was 1993, around halfway into the Croatian and Bosnian Wars. Yugoslav territories were being blockaded, NATO was airstriking the Bosnian Serbs, and long story short, shit seemed to be getting worse. Possibly inspired by all the other Turbo Folk diss tracks being pumped out, a group of four Croat Serb paramilitary guys wrote some patriotic lyrics, took a folk tune that was quite known in Serbia before, and went out to the fields of Knin, then part of the Serb Krahina, to record a song to inspire their comrades. After initial filming, it was either produced by or sent into a Serb ally TV station by the name of SRTV Knin and kept in their archives. So who are all the guys we see before us? Via online presence, we can positively confirm the identity of three people that were in this video, those being Neda Tinsor, the trumpeter in the back, Slobodan Vrga, the guy playing the Yamaha DX7, and Jelko Gamusha, the iconic singer. The only one not known for sure is, you guessed it, that face soldier. Thanks to a forum post dating back to 2013, it was widely assumed that he was Novoslav Djadzic, a Bosnian Serb convicted for being involved in the killing of 14 Muslim civilians. As much as a lot of us might tend to believe that spooky Serb Rambo played the accordion by day and committed genocide by night, that's probably not the case, as no other source nor any of the band members have been around to confirm this. In fact, the responses from the band members had a whole new level of confusion, with the keyboard is going from saying the accordion guy was a different guy named Novoslav, to claiming they never got his name at all. The contradicting info surrounding this guy makes it hard to pinpoint who he is for sure, though the most agreed upon fact about him seems to be that he's dead. But if the rest of the guys are still kicking, then what's the weird state it's in on YouTube? Well, thing is, despite the title of most uploads stating otherwise, neither of them are the original video. See, the band members never got a copy of the tape. For the rest of the war, the only known one remained in the archives of SRTV Knin, up until the decisive offensive of Operation Storm, which led to the Croat occupation of most of the Serb Krahina territory, including Knin. During this occupation, a Croatian director and filmmaker by the name of Pavle Vranjikan came across the SRTV Knin studio and stole the tape from their collection, after which he made an amateur edit of the video to blatantly mock the Serbs. This is the one that's commonly mistaken to be the original, and is also the reason it contains footage of Bosniak prisoners and civilian casualties, along with the anachronistic footage of cards just drinking from the cup, which happened in 2008. Uh, music? Video? Oh shit, I thought that was a new trial. Oh, while the with some water. Damn, that's good water. During this Croat man's possession, he also submitted the footage out to a few mock contest shows, including one called Chetnovizia, to be made fun of even more on there. What's important about this appearance is that it features an unaltered clip of the guys playing instruments, which has been used in instrumental loops of the song. This is why full versions of the song have a distracting bar where the Croat guy's watermark was cut out, while these videos do not. However, in uploading this crap quality edit to YouTube in 2008, Rani Khan made one fatal mistake that will likely haunt him and other like-minded Serb haters for the rest of their lives. He left the whole song intact. <laughs> By uploading the full song he was trying to ridicule, he unintentionally paved the way for lyric posting, memes, and its eventual upload on Spotify. Now, I initially thought that the popularity skyrocketed thanks to some now removed reupload I remember my friend showing me from back in the day, but it actually seems to be because of the YouTuber Kosian who posted his version of the video in 2013. Unlike the other reuploads, Kosian took the effort to re edit the song with Serb footage to align more with the originally intended patriotic message. But these re edits were done. <laughs> in such an intentionally shitty way. <laughs> that I can actually see how people mistook it for the original. <laughs> After this popularity surge, it also managed to become appropriated first as a joke song to use while crusading against the Ottomans, and later unfortunately as a front for Islamophobia, and I have no idea why this happened. Just from number of mentions and considering what the Ustasha insult comes from, it's directed more against the Croats if anything, and the song itself is actually pretty tame, at least compared to more... 
uh, Blunt's examples that came out around this time. <laughs> What intrigues me even more than that is the clip at the beginning of the 2008 upload, which is footage from an interview with a Bosnian Serb commander that looks a bit too much like the dude he's quoting from. This is a totally separate thing which has nothing to do with the original song, so why was it included? The obvious conclusion is that this Croat editor wanted to humiliate not Karadzic because God as a Serb sounded stupid to him, but maybe it goes beyond that. Maybe these guys have beef. Perhaps the editor thinks God is a Croat and wanted to shame this man for revenge. Why did not Karadzic even say this? Maybe he was being satirical. Maybe he's part of some orthodox branch I've never heard of. Maybe it's a spiritual morale booster. Or maybe. Just, just, just maybe. Maybe he thinks God is a Serb. Now, obviously I'm in no position to debate on what God's nationality is, so I won't judge him on that. So, what's happened to the song since then? Sadly, its story gets worse from here. In 2019, a mass shooting would occur at Christchurch, New Zealand, leaving around 50 people dead and nearly as many wounded. Beforehand, the perpetrator had been live-streaming himself with Serbia Strong playing in his car, and had the phrase Remove Kebab written on his gun, which is an internet-given Islamophobe phrase that is now associated with Serbia Strong. The remaining fan members all publicly condemned the shooting, but the song's usage during this event increased the Islamophobic label of it even more, so much so that YouTube began a mass purge of anything involving it in its entirety, with uploads to this day either getting removed for hate speech or being deemed as inappropriate by YouTube censors. However, this didn't do much to wipe Serbia Strong out of the public eye. A lot of the memes featuring the song are still alive and well, and the full video remains on YouTube, still getting re-uploaded out of the protests with the current go-to iteration belonging to Spooky Bones as of this time, though I'm sure many others already have it saved on their hard disks and whatnot. At one point, the song was also blasted over the Chicago PD radio during the George Floyd protests. <laughs> and as time goes on, there seems to be even less of a chance that we'll ever see the original video straight from the tape posted online. As far as we know, the crowd director still has the tape and refuses to post it up, but maybe sometime in the far future it may see the light of day. If I miss any info, be sure to share in the comments, but until then, see you next time.